Brahma-bhūta, becoming one with Brahman. Such a person was being evolved out of the ordinary person. What is ordinary person? Vyakti-bhūta. We are a separate individual, a separate ego. This is how we start our journey. The training of the mind and elimination of this ego is what we have been doing all this time in all the 18 chapters and now comes the final state the word used is Brahma Bhuta you become one with Brahman how does it happen? this is a subject that will be of immense benefit to humanity today this individuality in each one of us, how to handle it. All happiness, welfare, peace depends upon that one art. How to handle this sense of individuality. Several occasions we had before where an individual can collide with other individuals all the time. Normally that is what you find. Collision between individuals. All violence and crime misunderstanding, unhappiness, peacelessness, all this come from this collision of one individuality with another individuality. In spite of such collisions, there may be occasions in their lives of happy relationship also. Some luminous moments may be there, but that will be merely a freakish phenomenon. Normal phenomenon is collision, like a billiard ball in the language of Bertrand Russell, colliding with other billiard balls. The whole subject of human development and fulfillment revolves around this particular theme, how to handle this focus of individuality within us by which we can live happily and in peace with other people and project that peace onto the world outside as well. There is a very big subject for all people. So we began as a separate individual, sometimes colliding with others as well. Then slowly a change came. Those changes which have been indicated in all these various chapters, the spiritual growth of the individual, the expansion of the individual. The individual expands because, um, as we call it in Sanskrit, I am separate. Then I say, no, I am one with you. In married life, a husband and wife, they feel one with each other. That is the beginning. It should last also. So there is some expansion. There is a place for you in my thinking. I love you, I serve you. In this way we begin. But we don't know how to handle it. Therefore it becomes a fictitious experience, not a genuine, permanent experience. The Gita gives you the psychology and philosophy of that human development. That is the whole subject of all these 17 chapters earlier, ending up in this 18th chapter, 
we come to this brahma bhuto become one with brahman and river starts from the mountain individual then other rivers join it becomes a bigger river but it is still a river then it joins the sea that confluence of the river and the sea is a wonderful situation i have seen the ganges entering into the bay of bengal from the air so also the mighty iravati river in burma entering into the bay of bengal for miles together you can still see individuality of the river but after some time the river is disappeared into the ocean it was the ocean it is now become one with the ocean that is the statement brahma bhuto the verse 54 said brahma bhuta prasanna atma that the time when the mind becomes absolutely prasanna calm and serene there is no individuality separate all that has been overcome prasanna atma na shochati na kamshati these high tension emotions do not come in such a mind it is so calm and steady na shochati na kamshati sama sarveshu bhuteshu a sense of oneness with all and equal and one with all that reality comes that's the attitude as brahman we are one with all i am not a separate one colliding with somebody else when you realize your oneness all collisions will stop only pure love and relationship based on love can prevail sama sarvesh bhuteshu mat bhaktim lebhate param that supreme bhakti you get in that supreme divine person in god himself that is the state in which we really become devotees bhaktas the earlier chapter krishna has spoken of four types of bhaktas four types this is the fourth one jnani artho jignasu arthati and jnani and that jnani is myself i am one with him that state is coming now complete identification with the divine and removal of identification with my little separate self the separate self is what we try to handle in all ethical life moral life in buddhism there is a central theme there is no such thing as a separate self which is an illusion which is a delusion the sooner you overcome the better out of that comes only moral activity moral attitude the little self must go i must find a place for you we begin with that expansion vikasa by adding one more person in my way of thinking when i say i i mean we husband and wife then children then the neighbors then one's own fellow countrymen and the whole of humanity and the living beings in this way the little i expands vyakti vikasa the biggest subject in ethics is this vyakti vikasa you feel your oneness with all no enmity tato da vijukupsate as the isha upanishad said when you see the same atman in every being and all beings in the atman what comes of you tato na vijukupsate no hatred is possible thereafter only love can come a positive force so sama sarveshu bhuteshu mat bhaktim lebhate param that is a supreme bhakti bhakti which has become supremely transcendent the little i is gone that will be discussed in the remaining verses here very important point is coming to in the gita where complete self elimination takes place complete surrender to the divine takes place not i but thou that attitude will come that's what's being developed now in a few verses until we come to what our great acharya has called the charma shloka the highest the final shloka of the gita complete self surrender to the divine then he said verse 55 last week we studied bhaktya mam abhijanati yavan yashchasmi tattvatah through that bhakti you understand what is my true nature what is my true source through really tattvatah in reality the words used is yavan yashchasmi shankara calls it 
Yavan means in the Leela aspect also it is the divine. Just yes, ask me, Niti, Niti aspect also is the divine. Nitya and Leela are one, Sri Ramakrishna repeatedly said. Whatever is Nitya is also Leela. Whatever is Leela is also Nitya. The same Brahman is both Nirguna and Saguna. So everywhere it is only He, infinite ocean of reality. Satyam, Yanam, Anantam, Brahma. That reality. So with this Bhakti, you understand the true nature of that divine as it is in itself, Tattvataha. Tato maam tattato jnatva. With this realization of the truth of God, vishate tadanantaram, you enter into that divine. You say, it's no physical entrance here. Sankaracharya clarifies. There is no physical entrance. Your obstruction is removed. That ego was the obstruction. When that goes away, what is here is also there. Ramakrishna says, put a small stick in a, what you call, sheet of water. You will find left side, right side, all separate. Actually, it is not separate. It looks like separate. That stick seems to separate the two. Actually, it is just one ocean only. So, remove the stick, you realize it. That is the work that is done here. That distinction that obtained till now, fictitious, but it gave us a lot of trouble. That fictitious distinction has vanished. And therefore, we are able to enter into the Supreme. We were one with it, we thought we were separate, that attitude is gone, now we are one with it. So, tato maam tato to jnatva, vishate tadanantaram. There is no anantaram means, there is no time sequence here. It is always there that you remove the obstruction, then everything is the same. Remove that little stick, the water is one and the same, not here and there. For convenience you can speak of here and there, like space, I build this wall, and I have cut space into two. What is inside, what is outside. Space doesn't do any of these differences. It doesn't know anything. So only one infinite space is there. Similarly, reality is one and non-dual. We made a distinction within it by our notion of individuality, the ego. That is a fictitious notion. We are trying to eliminate it through various activities. First, we strengthen that notion. See the wonder of it. To a baby, you don't say eliminate the eye. It has no eye at all. We produce the eye in the baby, the ego. Strengthen it. Always praise the baby. That is the first thing. Then only you learn to tell the baby, eliminate this eye now. If you want to live with others, you have to eliminate it. You have to soften it. You have to go beyond it. You have to expand the concept of eye. That has been the teaching all these various chapters. Now we are coming to that final act, the little life goes away, is set aside, is dissolved in that infinite one. He alone is, we are nothing. Thou art alone true. That knowledge will come. So he says, Samsiddhim, Vishate Tadanantaram. We enter into that supreme infinite reality. Every mystic, Sufi, Christian, Jew, Buddhist or Hindu has emphasized this point. We have spiritual experiences, the highest consummation, the little I goes away. Only he remains. That is the greatest experience. That is the unitive experience, they call it. Unitive experience. Till now we are separate. Now we find we are one and the same. The same substance, that is consciousness, this is also consciousness. That chit is also chit. That understanding comes. And so, in verse 56, which we do today, Krishna says here, Sarvakarmani sada kurvano mat vipashrayaha mat prasadat avapnoti shashvatam padam avyayam. says, even though you are working all the time, Sarvakarmani kurvano, he says, sada kurvano, you go on working, there is no harm. Is you have to give up the work to achieve this knowledge is not there. In the context of life and work, you can achieve this realization. That is the central theme of the Gita. A housewife, a laborer, an administrator, everyone doing one's own work can develop this expansion of one's own individuality. 
In fact, that is the field for this development. Use this life as an occasion for your own development, human development, from this to that. Already you are an individual. That is good. Now expand it, expand it, expand it. Become that infinite Brahman, Brahma Bhuto. No hatred, no negative forces can come from you once you achieve this kind of growth, even a little, what to speak of getting it in that infinite dimension. So, Sarva Karmani, Api, Sada Kurvano, very emphatic. Always you are doing work, yet you are in Brahman. Not necessary to give up work to become in Brahman. There is a stress in the Gita all the time. Sarva Karmani, Sada Kurvano, Madhyapashraya, you have dedicated yourself to that ultimate reality, to Him. Krishna used the word I, dedicated to me, Madhyapashraya. He speaking as the infinite Atman in the heart of all beings, Madhyapashraya. Matpasadat param apnoti. Through my grace, you will achieve the highest. Matpasadat. You say, avapnoti. What is it? Shashvatam padam avdayam. That eternal state from which there is no fall at all, which is eternal and infinite. That state. Till now you were a small spark of the fire. Now you become fire itself. No more this kind of littleness, finiteness, creatureliness will be attached to you. So through my grace, you achieve that state of infinitude, which is your true nature. You didn't know it. And the life gave me this education. I am not this tiny little thing. There is something infinite about me. All greatness comes from that understanding. By not understanding the method correctly, we try to expand our ego, fatten it, and that is extremely harmful to oneself and to others. That ego, by expanding which you destroy the self-respect of other people, is a dangerous ego. That ego, by expanding which you encourage other people also, restore them to their own self-respect, that is the correct infinite expansion. These two are to be properly understood. You have the concept of the Superman in Vedanta. We, as human beings, limited pe people we are. But the Superman is unlimited, like Brahma Bhuto is a Superman. But this Superman is the center of peace, of love and harmony. But in the West, we develop the concept of the Superman in Nietzsche, German philosopher. That Superman is a dangerous man, very egoistic, arrogant, full of energy and power, can destroy the lives of millions of people. The Superman comes on the scene in violence of deed and demeanor. This is Nietzsche's sentence. Superman comes in violence of deed and demeanor. That ego becomes expanded, expanded, fattened, becomes a danger to everybody else. That's what we have seen in that type of concept of Superman. Hitler is one such Superman, exactly as predicted by Nietzsche's concept of the Superman. And we know the result. The other Superman makes you happy, confers happiness on people, peace on people. That is the real source of spiritual energy and power. So he said, Mat prasadad avapnoti shashvatam padam avyayam The ordinary man becomes the superman. The ordinary human being becomes the superhuman being. That super is of this nature. He realized his own infinite nature as Brahman. He became Brahma Bhuta. And so Tatoma Vijukupsate no hatred, no negative energy can come out of him. Only love which is positive can come out of such an individual. So Krishna's super person is of that nature. The Gita concept of super person is of that nature. In the Upanishads also it is there. This is what is stressed in this particular section. Matpasadad avapnoti shashvatam padam avyayam through my grace, you achieve this high state. Where from this grace comes in? Till now we did not hear much about grace. Occasionally a suggestion came here and there. But this chapter towards the end is going to be centrally concerned with the concept of grace. 
a certain development has come. Now we can understand the meaning of grace. The body and the mind and the self in, in, in us has to be have to be developed in a particular way to be able to appreciate that wonderful reality called grace of the divine. At this stage, that development has come. To all the previous training that I received in the 17 chapters, I have come to a particular state, a devotee can say, where I can appreciate this wonderful idea of divine grace and divine surrender to the divine, which is going to be the last note in the music of the Gita. We began with tremendous strength, stress on individuality, manliness, strength, etc. in the beginning. Now, having developed all this, we are able to understand the truth of things that Brahman alone is, we are only just a spark of the divine. We have no separate identity. We are one with the divine. It is at this stage, grace becomes operative and we can appreciate it and we can benefit from it. Earlier stage, we cannot benefit from that grace. Chetasa, so verse 56, will, 57, tells us, Sarvakarmani, my sannyasya, matparaha, buddhi yogam upashritya, matchitta satatam bhava. Krishna says, Chetasa, Sarvakarmani, my sannyasya, matparaha. Mentally, Dedicate all your actions to me, Krishna says, and be dedicated to me yourself. Not only the action, but yourself as a person. Matparaha. Then what happens? Buddhi yogam upashritya. You take the help of buddhi yoga. Yoga of buddhi, which is the original statement of the Gita in the second chapter, verse 49. Buddhi yoga is first introduced. Buddhya yukto yaya patha karma bandham prahasya see he said verse 49 develop that yoga buddhi with that yoga buddhi you can live your life do all actions but you will not be bound at all you can be free through that that's the promise in the second chapter two types are there the ascetic people who renounce all actions go to the forest try to realize Brahman in Samadhi that is one group. The other is people who have to work here, work hard, yet can they realize the highest? Yes, I tell you, you can realize the highest. How? Resort to Buddhi Yoga. That is the language he uses there. Buddhya Yukto Yaya Partha Karma Bandham Prahasyasi. Two types of yoga. One is Sankhi Yoga, the other is Buddhi Yoga. My Buddhi Yoga is meant for people who have to work in this world live in this world and yet who love to achieve spiritual development, I give you this philosophy of comprehensive spirituality. All actions are included in this. So this is the beginning. Now it is being referred to towards the end of this great book. Buddhi Yogam Upashritya. In those subjects when we were dealing with, I had told Buddhi is that psychic energy in a human being which has been thoroughly trained and disciplined and purified. It becomes a luminous instrument of human development. That is called buddhi. The same psychic energy. After all, it is psychic energy that functions through my sensory system. I see, I hear, I do all this. Then I think, I make a will of my own. All this is psychic energy. We have not refined it yet. A little refinement gives you ordinary character energy. Still more refinement gives you this buddhi. Highly refined psychic energy is buddhi. Luminous, tremendous impact of power. So that obstacles vanish before that buddhi. Because along with intelligence, there is also willpower in that buddhi. Integrated intelligence and willpower. And all purified. Can't do any harm to people. Only good. That is the concept of buddhi in its highest development in Vedanta. So Krishna always stresses this point. Buddhau sharanam anvicha. Take refuge in buddhi. Through buddhi you can achieve everything. Whenever I want to bless anybody, I help him to achieve that buddhi. Krishna says there. 
buddhi yogam upashritya is a that buddhi i give by which yashamam upayantite they come to me through the help of that buddhi so evolve buddhi any character development is the product of this evolution of buddhi 5% buddhi must be there to have ordinary character just like a good worthy citizen doing service to the people in your department of work there also you find character that person has achieved a measure of this evolution of buddhi out of his or her psychic energy system and this can, can go on expanding expanding and purifying until when it comes to the purest state we get this buddhi yoga that is one sone effort to refine one's energies within i have used the word refine again and again on several sundays here as we refine crude oil and produce beautiful petroleum products so the human mind must be able to refine one's own experiences and bring out of them beautiful character products efficiency in action concern for others tremendous peace of mind what a beautiful product it is all coming from the same energy the energy that goes now to destroy other people to exploit other people the same energy has become pure energy character energy citizenship energy what a beautiful idea the energy of a devotee of god very beautiful energy it is so i am only handling this energy by training it in higher and higher attitudes until you get this energy of buddhi yoga buddhi buddhi which is in tune with the divine because nearest to the atman is buddhi just behind the buddhi is the atman senses are far away but the buddhi is nearest neidishtam brahma shankaracharya calls buddhi nearest to brahman is buddhi in our own system there is a divine in all of us there is a first teaching of vedanta each soul is potentially divine vivekananda puts it if so how shall we get it that buddhi is nearest to that divine spark in you senses are far away don't depend upon the senses senses must be controlled and disciplined and be subject to this buddhi reason enlightened intelligence so evolution of buddhi is the way to character when we speak of value oriented education it only means we are helping children to evolve this type of buddhi this yoga buddhi in each one of them the beginning stage 5% 10% you go on even that is wonderful there is very often there is no buddhi at all man is a bundle of nerves a bundle of emotions anything going wrong immediately they react violently burning all the buses around that is where is buddhi there absolutely no buddhi today in our political life at least there is no buddhi there is energy there is crude human energy just imagine the one who is running the government today tomorrow he becomes opposition he starts burning the bus when he was government he stopped it but when he ceases to be the government he also starts burning the bus what is that buddhi crude psychic energy nothing else is there that is the country today so this teaching when people understand the same energy they will develop but purify it more and more socialize it making it the servant of all the friend of all for the strength of the nation that kind of transformation of man has not taken place yet it has to take place otherwise this will be our undoing so when kita speaks of this buddhi yogam upashritya machittaha then the mind become fixed on that infinite one who is also in you not only in me there is no opposition to the other person is only a technical opposition complete opposition is not there that's why a sporting type of political attitude will maintain opposition but it won't become enmity trying to destroy the other person no such thing is there in a healthy democratic politics opposition and the government they can mix with each other they are human beings they are fellow citizens for a particular purpose they are in the treasury they are in the opposition but here is opposition means opposition that's why we have converted our political life into what i always describe as american football each one trying to pull down the other trample the other leaving the ball to itself that's called american football and mohanbagan football means you are active with the football 
You don't destroy other people. Take the ball to the goal. That's more healthy football. So our politics has to change from one to the other. So this buddhi yogam upasritya machittaha. Ma, your buddhi rests in me, rests in the divine. Remember these words. They do not mean a god sitting far away in the sky. The first lesson we must learn in Vedanta. Whenever the word God is used, whenever Krishna uses the word I, he always refers to the inner self of all. That one infinite reality which is the inner self of all. What a beautiful conception. Yat sakshat, aparokshat brahma, ya atma sarvantaraha. A profound utterance in the Rudharnika Upanishad. Yat sakshat, aparokshat brahma. That supreme Brahman of the nature of pure experience, who is the self of all, not some faraway Brahman, who is the self of all. The Atma Sarvantaraha. I want to know that Brahman, says the disciple to the teacher. And that is the central theme of all the Upanishads. The Atman, in you and me, we all know, the little individual. But the Atman, which is the self of all, we don't know. I want to know that. That is the great subject, subject to the Atman in the Upanishads, the infinite self, the self of all. That is why in the Upanishad it is mentioned there, Aupanishadam Purusham Prachamaha. Disciple is asking the teacher, tell me about the Purusha taught in the Upanishads. Then Shankara comments there, Upanishads Sveva Vijnayate Na Anyatra. This subject is taught only in the Upanishads. Nowhere else in the world's literature. He may speak of God sitting in the sky, extra cosmic, monotheistic, all this he may speak, but the God who is the inner self of all is only taught in such clear language in the Upanishads, in the Vedanta. So here, whenever you use the word I, Krishna using, it's not a separate I. I am one with you. He is your friend. When he said in the fifth chapter, last verse, think of me, as your friend is the language. Suhudam Sarvabhotanam and the Suhrit of all beings, then you will get peace. If you realize this truth, I am your friend, I am one with you. Suhudam Sarvabhotanam Jnatva Mam Shantim Richati. Knowing this truth, you attain supreme peace. So that is the concept of God throughout this Vedantic literature. Something that is experienceable. Ya Atma Sarvantaraha with your own inner self and therefore you can experience Brahman not merely believe in a God belief can come to anybody a far away God you can just believe you can't do anything more about it you can't know him you can't take a spacecraft and go to that God somewhere far away in the universe you can't do that only he is there I do what I can and invoke his blessing that's all but this God you can realize because he is your own self Behind your ego is that infinite self. So you can realize him. So it is called Pratyaksham, Anubhu Avasanam, Brahma Vityanam, Shankara calls it in this Sutra Bhashya. Knowledge of Brahman consummates in the experience of Brahman. Not merely knowledge, something external. You experience Brahman. How can you experience? Because he is your own self. He is the self of yourself. So this concept through the Atman you realize Brahman. That Brahman is the Atman of all. Therefore, realize it. And it is consciously expressed in the Shvetashvara Upanishad, where it says, Yadatma tattve nahi brahma tattvam dipopme nahi yadyukta prabashe ajam nityam sarvapapai vimuktam jnatva muchyate sarvapapai hi jantuhu. Through the Atman, you realize Brahman. Because the Atman is yourself. Brahman is the self of all selves. So you can realize him through this. With Atma Tattvena, Brahma Tattvam you realize. Then you achieve real fulfillment, experiential. The stress on experience made for tremendous compassion in the world of religion in India. So that we don't destroy atheist, agnostic, anybody. After all, what is belief? I believe there is God. If you don't live a godly life, what is the use of that belief? So belief is nothing to us. Many great saints were originally atheistic, agnostic. 
Vivekananda himself was an agnostic. Ramakrishna was an agnostic when he began his spiritual life. So we don't complain about these things at all because it is experience that is needed, not an advanced type of belief. Oh, as I believe. Then you remain at that stage only. Only belief, belief, belief. A cozy, comfortable belief. That's not religion in India. It's a power to set the soul on fire. I must realize the truth, if there is a truth. That is a feeling in India. So that is why Krishna uses the word I as the inner self of all. Ahamatma, Gudagesha, Sarvabhuta, Ashya, Stitaha. He had said in the earlier chapter, I am the self in the heart of all beings who are Juna. That is the self, is the I. Machitta, Satatam, Bhava. Constantly, your mind is fixed in me. Never again it can deviate from there. This is the type of development that has come and the consequence of this will be described later on, as I said earlier, which is the Charama Shloka of the Gita, complete transcendence of the ego, complete surrender to the divine. We shall get into those verses next Sunday when we meet here. Now we are coming to the end of the Gita. That's why the language now is more and more of that type, surrender the self, complete self-surrender, resignation, some great idea is coming. If you had put it earlier, you would have misunderstood it. Now we are in a position to understand that this surrender is truly victory. Surrender at this stage is truly victory. That is a wonderful language. Surrender is never victory, but at this stage surrender is victory. That's what we are going to illustrate in the coming verses. So, as I announced last Sunday, today we have a distinguished Swamiji as our guest, Swami Prabhudhananda of San Francisco Vedanta Society or Vedanta Society of Northern California. He has not only San Francisco but also Lake uh, 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 Tahoe, that area, and also in uh, 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 a big retreat, as I told last Sunday, 2,000 acres of retreat near San Francisco. So he is there for the last several years. Earlier he was in Bangalore as a member, later on the president of the Bangalore Ramakrishna Ashrama. He was here during the temple dedication in 1981. He came on 17th here. He is to go to Bangalore on the 23rd before flying to America. So we requested him to speak a few words and he will come and speak to you on this occasion. The remaining 20-25 minutes we will be spending on this particular theme. Swami Prabhudhananda. Revered Swamiji, <coughs> brother monks and friends, I am very happy to be here again after nearly 10 years. As Swamiji already told you, I had the great good fortune of being present here during the dedication of this beautiful temple and a very, what should I say, very refreshing campus. At that time, <clears throat> as you know, there are not so many trees. Now, it's a fine natural garden. And Swamiji has asked me to think aloud. It's not a lecture. So he has asked me to think aloud about our life in the United States, especially in San Francisco. What is our life? Our life is identical with the life of Vedanta. It comes to this. How is Vedanta lived in the United States or how our friends in the United States are receiving the great 
message of our ancient seers as presented to them by great swami vivekananda <clears throat> about our center it is simple it was started by swami vivekananda when he visited the united states for the second time that's in 1900 so he came to san francisco he gave talks and he started the he made a he made just a beginning of a vedanta society there wherever swami ji made a beginning it is not just a simple beginning he put a very strong seed there with all great power power of his realization power of the blessings of his master all that he put into it so the center is growing and here again when we are asked to say about the growth of vedanta i mean it is in uh, in two ways let me put it this way in two ways one is the thought of vedanta how the thought is being spread more and more influencing more and more the thought of the west and the other side is how the thought is transforming lives of people bringing meaning to life bringing peace and joy to life let me take up one or two points in this about the thought it's a common experience now if we read some of the books written by the psychologists or some of the religious people or some thinkers we run into references we run into thought of vedanta thought of swami ji i don't think previously it was like that they refer to say i one one book on psychology i don't know whether uh, some of you are familiar with this the name of the book is the road less traveled someone gave me that book it's an interesting book it goes on after all the road less traveled he means love and he puts in a in a very psychological way scientific way and here and there he mentions about the eastern thought and in olden days whenever they mention eastern thought there is to be a little negativity about it now it's not like that now with respect and then not only that to find a support support for their own theories their own thought by saying some of these ideas about say eastern thought about the world view the dynamic world view or the nature of reality similar thing and other things are we run into people and people immediately they start the conversation oh you are from india hmm? oh i know i have read the bhagavad gita it used to be very rare even 20 years back it was very difficult to do that very difficult to find such people 
and in scholastic circles, especially in seminars and then uh, uh, some of these uh, ecumenical conferences, it is heard with respect. In fact, some of our, uh, I know about three of our centers, our Hollywood Center uh, is a member of the Ecumenical Council, our Interfaith Council, and uh, our Seattle Center is a member, and then our San Francisco too is a member of the Interfaith Council. And then there we uh, join together from different uh, denominations, different religions they come, and we discuss about this, and they listen to, and then most of the times we find they are well versed in these things. In our uh, uh, spiritual ideas, they know the spiritual ideas. In fact, one, uh, uh, he was a, an associate of Thomas Merton, uh, one uh, father from a, tra a Trappist monk. He gave a talk in our retreat. In fact, we invite once a year a speaker from another denomination to share with us his uh, ideas. Ours is, as you know, is a mixed audience. They are, some of them are, they want to know, they want to have the ideas, some, some people want some inspiration for their spiritual life, the practical side they want. That's what tell these distinguished gentlemen who come to speak to us. See, our people are interested in spiritual life. At the same time, they want to know ideas, how you present, how your denomination, how your tradition looks at this, part, this spiritual life, we want to know that. So he presented it in a beautiful way. Beautiful way, in general terms. Self and the reality. In the uh, olden traditional uh, Judeo-Christianic religion, Mentioning about spiritual life in its general terms is not very common. It is in Vedanta we find the um, reality is talked about in general terms. That, hmm, that is enough for us. He or she is not necessary for us. We don't want to get into trouble with all this uh, male, female and all that. Not necessary. Is it, that, sat. So like that, explaining the whole thing. So to me it seems it is the influence of Vedanta. And an another point I want to tell you. One of our, uh, one uh, lecturer failed to turn up because of some, he had some problems. Someone else, one of our friends, took the chair. Uh, she was talking about uh, Judaism. There she mentioned, see, in uh, religion, in, in our synagogues and then uh, in churches, many highly intellectual people come and attend. Some of them are Nobel laureates, brilliant speakers, brilliant doctors, brilliant engineers, sharp, sharp intellect. But when they come to church or a synagogue or to any religion in general, they somehow don't want to think. More and more, the idea of thinking in spiritual life, what we call vichara, or discrimination, or inquiry into spiritual truths, is coming more and more there. That we can clearly say, it is the influence of Vedanta. Of course, often, the different denominations tell, oh, they were all in our scriptures. 
Our teachers have told us that we should think, we should inquire, we should ask questions, see this, see this, one, two, three, four, like that. That's exactly right. But it is Vedanta which opens the eyes to that. As uh, many of you might be thinking just at this moment that the same thing is necessary even in this country too. In our own country too it is necessary. Where highly, highly intellectuals, highly religious people, uh, aristocrats and then um, highly uh, educated people, all when it comes to spiritual life, somewhere the inquiry goes away. Thinking is not there. If there is thinking, we don't do foolish things. We don't do violent things. It's always be constructive. It will always be constructive. So that the effect of this vichara we see in all these different denominations but let us not take it all and sundry, everyone uh, is doing like that. But the effect we see here, there, here, there, here, there, here and there, the pockets, pockets we see that. And then in the books, at the intellectual circles, we see. And coming to the other side, it is the emphasis of the spiritual experience, which our mystics, especially in modern times, Sri Ramakrishna emphasized. We have read all the books. So what? In the almanac, there is the forecast of so much of rain, but if you squeeze the almanac, you can't get, you can't get a drop. So Sri Ramakrishna emphasized actual living the life of Vedanta, life of the spirit, and then life should be transformed, the transformation of life. In that way too, in the West, when we meet with people, we find those who come to us, of course it's a little bragging, uh, those who come to us, we find they want that, you know. How about lectures and classes? Oh, we know that. Some of them can themselves give good lectures, better than Swamis. And uh, the classes and books, oh, I will, this book, that book, yes, they're all there. Most of them have read those books. Already they have read those books. And then if you ask, oh, in college, oh, in college I studied some Sanskrit, I know Gita. It is very common. Those who come to us, anyway, come means just seeing the newspaper or by word of mouth, they come as a new person, as new persons they come. They, I've already read that. What they want is some food spiritual food, some inspiration, spiritual inspiration and they want to lead the life and get some peace, peace inside and meaning for life and that inner security, it's for that also they come, especially when they read the lives of Swami Vivekananda, Sri Ramakrishna, and especially the Holy Mother, Sri Sharada Devi, where the food seems to be well cooked and prepared for everyone. That is how uh, many of these newcomers react to uh, the Holy Mother's life and teachings. In the earlier generation, in, uh, in the United States especially, oh, that used to happen even in this country, the people were, our swamis were reluctant to present the Holy Mother. The idea was, her life is so subtle, simple, uh, people may not under appreciate, like that, a kind, with a kind of trepidation they used to present. That is going now, especially after her centenary, that seems to have gone. So, openly we talk about, and they also say, I want, we want to read. Uh, want to study more. 
like the that side is uh, becoming more and more prominent again please don't ask me about statistics hmm? <laughs> in uh, chandigarh uh, someone newspaper man comes he want to ask about this how many how many of them how many of them how many americans how many this that's not the indian way at all you know in indian way ancient way is not that way at all statistics though it is necessary true but we find the entering into the psyche we may not be able to give 1 2 3 4 but the the general the concentration in the general psyche of people that is increasing awareness awareness about vedanta awareness about the mysticism of vedanta the practical side of vedanta it means the purity of life the purity of life and then this uh, leading the spiritual life and getting some peace inside and inner security and in life external life a little better relationship with others that's a very big subject better relationship with others all these it's a question for us can vedanta solve all these problems can vedanta help help people whether in this country or in the united states one side something tells us surely it will and one side it tells when we study swami when we study swami ji's words they are filled with faith yes swami ji was a prophet a knower of brahman and deep insight into the history and uh, uh, the nature of uh, countries and nations so he makes certain comments so it fills us with deep faith and we swamis and devotees go by that more than by statistics Swamiji said he gave the message for 1500 years after all we are we have finished uh, how many not even 100 years have we finished so it's just a beginning but in the beginning we see the uh, we see that fervor the intensity this is subtle if we go on giving some gross examples you say the intensity is there ah where is that intensity where is that intensity like that it's very difficult to say mm. what what's that? there we may say oh so many people came in our retreat we have a, i told you we have a special program every year constantly every year the attendance is increasing and uh, we welcome the uh, people of different denominations to come and spend time in meditation prayer either in groups or individually they can come two days three days five days they can stay that number is increasing and more and more people have come there and then they say this is the type we wanted there because here when they come they are absolutely free they can do in their own way but only one condition we say should not disturb others whatever is there should not disturb uh, disturb the, our own uh, things there but you go on doing as you like there is no psychological pressure <coughs> there is no psychological pressure there are so many other retreat places also but there is a pressure but here we do believe that all religions are true we do believe that all these great spiritual teachers are really venerable they are all manifestations special manifestations of the divine power and we offer worship it is not for the sake of uh, ecumenic ecumenism 
or a kind of propaganda. It's not that whether one person comes or no one comes or millions have come, we are going to do it then. So, that genuineness is there. We are really genuine. And when we go to Sri Ramakrishna and Swami Jindra, they are 100% gold, pure gold. That has its effect. Here there is no, nothing, no show. At the most we'll say, I'm sorry. Oh, Swami, you are doing like that. Yes, I think I will improve tomorrow. Today it is like this. So we go about like that. And absolutely free from commercialism. Absolutely free from commercialism. We don't charge even...